A random effects model is a linear regression model when we have panel data and we have an error component model. We call it a random effects model if the individual or time specific effects are random in the sense that they are not correlated with any of the explanatory variables. In this lecture we will consider the case when the individual and time specific effects are correlated with the explanatory variables. So the setup for this lecture is as follows. We have a stationary and balanced panel. To simplify notation we only have one explanatory variable. We have a linear regression model explaining a dependent variable with an explanatory variable. yit is beta 1 plus beta 2 xit plus an error term epsilon it. We have an error component model and as an illustration we'll assume that we have only individual specific effects. So the error term epsilon it is the sum of the individual specific effect and a random term mu it. The random term mu it is nice in the sense that all the explanatory variables are exogenous with respect to this error term. So they are definitely uncorrelated and they also satisfy all the Gauss-Markov assumptions. So they are homoscedastic and not autocorrelated. Everything is stationary in this model, including these error terms. In this model, the individual specific effects will be fixed and not random. That means that we do allow a correlation between these effects and the X variable. To consider a concrete example, suppose that the dependent variable is the salary, perhaps the hourly wage. We have explanatory variables such as education, experience and so on. The individual specific effect alpha i then captures factors that are specific to this particular individual which is not included among the explanatory variables. This could be factors such as intelligence, willingness to work hard and so on. For this particular example it would not be unreasonable to assume that this individual specific effect was correlated with the level of education. You may claim that individuals with a high alpha i may on average have a higher level of education. If there is such a correlation between alpha i and xit then we call this individual specific effect fixed. So in this lecture we do assume that the expected value of alpha i conditionally on any of the x variables for individual i that is at any point in time is not necessarily zero and it may depend on xi. That of course means that the expected value of the error term in the linear regression conditionally on xit which is the expected value of alpha i plus mu it conditionally on xit which we can divide into two parts expected value of alpha i conditionally on xit plus the expected value of mu it conditionally on xit. So we have assumed that these are nice error terms so this is zero but this doesn't have to be zero when we have fixed individual specific effects so the whole thing doesn't have to be zero. That means that this explanatory variable is not exogenous with respect to the error term of the regression model. We know that this is really bad news for the OLS estimator. It will no longer be consistent, it's not going to be unbiased, all the standard errors will be inconsistent and we lose pretty much all of the properties of the OLS estimator. So we have this unfortunate result. We should avoid estimating this model using OLS. The alternative in this case would be to use the fixed effect estimator. The idea of this estimator is as follows. Let's take this error term and the formula that we have for the error term according to the error component model and let's substitute that into the regression model. I will then get yit equal to beta 1 plus 
let's put the individual specific effect as the second term plus beta 2 xit plus mu it. So basically what we are doing is that we are introducing the individual specific effects right into the regression model. We are increasing the number of parameters to estimate in this model from 2, beta 1 and beta 2, to 2 plus n, because we have n of these individual specific effects, one for each individual. This will still be okay because we have n times t observations, so we still have more observations than we have unknown parameters. So the idea of this model is simply as follows. If we put x on this axis, say education, and we put the hourly wage on this axis, then for an individual who has an individual specific effect that's exactly zero, then this is the trend line. We have a beta 1 and a slope of beta 2. So this is true if alpha i is equal to 0. For an individual which has a positive individual specific effect, we have the following trend line. Alpha i is greater than 0 for this individual, and this is beta 1 plus alpha i. Comparing these two individuals, the individual with a positive individual specific effect tend to, on average, have a higher salary assuming that they have the same level of education. Similarly, individuals with a negative individual specific effect will have a trend line that's below. So this will be beta 1 minus alpha i. The analysis is very similar to the analysis when we had dummy variables as explanatory variables. In that case, we had two groups, and each group were allowed to have a different intercept. The groups, in this case, are all the observations over time for a specific individual. So each individual is allowed to have its own intercept. The important part of this model is that the error term is now mu it, and the explanatory variable is exogenous with respect to this error term. The cost is that we have to introduce a lot of new parameters to estimate, namely n new parameters, and that will decrease the efficiency in the estimate of the beta 2 parameter. This is the basic idea behind the fixed effect estimator. Simply introduce n minus 1 dummy variables and add those dummy variables to the regression model. Then you can estimate it using OLS and you will get a consistent estimator. We are not going to look at the exact details of how this is done. We just conclude that we can estimate the model using the fixed effect estimator. And the idea behind this estimator is to introduce n minus one dummy variables. This estimator will be consistent. The standard errors will be consistent and we will get estimates of the individual specific effects. So even though we have only considered one explanatory variable and the individual specific effect, you can easily extend this to several explanatory variables and another version of the error component model. Estimating a model using the fixed effect estimator is straightforward. If you look at my lecture on the random effects estimator, I also show how to do the fixed effect estimator in Evius and Gretel. Finally, there is one point that we have to mention, and that's an important shortcoming of the fixed effect estimator. To understand this, let's define the concept individual specific variation. We say that we have no individual specific variation over time in an explanatory variable if xit is equal to a constant c that may be different for different individuals. Now this may look a little bit weird, but the idea is really straightforward. Say that xit again is the amount of education for individual i at time t. And let's say that we start our study at a point in time where this person is working and perhaps the this individual has 12 years of education. 
So xit is equal to 12 when t is equal to 1. Assuming that this individual does not go back to school during this study, xit will be equal to 12 for all time periods. So ci is 12 for this individual. So for this particular individual, there is no variation over time. xit is fixed over time. Now, if this happened to be the case for all individuals, so maybe for, for our second individual, xit is 9 for every time period, ci is 9 for that guy. If that's the case, then we say that we have no individual specific variation over time for the variable education. Notice that it's actually enough if there's just one individual in the entire sample for which xit changes over time. That's enough for us to have some individual specific variation over time. We won't have a lot, but at least we have some. So here's the problem for the fixed effect estimator. This estimator is available only if there is some individual specific variation over time in all of the explanatory variables. So if you want to do a fixed effect estimator and let's say you have education, maybe a dummy variable, which is one if the individual is married and so on, then you have to check that you at least have some individual specific variation in each of these variables. The thing that happens if you don't is that you will actually end up with perfect multicollinearity. As long as you have a tiny, tiny bit of variation over time in each explanatory variable, you can do the fixed effect estimator. But the estimator will be really bad if the variation is small, because we will have a case with high level of multicollinearity. The fixed effect estimator works best if you have a lot of variation over time in each of the explanatory variables.